Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Pluto and I'm here today to talk to you about four options you have for solving any problem. I hope that you're staying safe during the spread of the coronavirus. If you're able to, please stay home as that can really help to flatten the curve and to keep down the number of cases that are coming up. If you are required to go into work because your job is essential, uh, thank you so much for what you're doing, for putting yourself on the line. Um, let's all support those folks by staying home and practicing social distancing. I'm here to talk about DBT today. DBT stands for Dialectic Behavior Therapy. It was developed by a woman named Marsha Linehan who had her own mental health struggles and became a mental health researcher and a therapist. I think she's pretty badass and she created a new system that built off of the knowledge of cognitive behavioral therapy and incorporated mindfulness to create a newer, more improved version of cognitive therapy. DBT was created with the idea that many people we perceive as being difficult or unstable often lack certain skills that many of us might have learned in childhood. If we can teach people these skills, they have a better chance of being functioning adults. DBT breaks down the skills into four different modules. The first module is mindfulness, which I define as paying attention on purpose without judgment. The second module is interpersonal effectiveness, which is about how we communicate with others, how we relate to the world in an effective manner to be able to achieve our goals. Third, we have emotion regulation, which is about how we relate to our emotions, how we utilize them, channel them effectively, how we build positive emotion in our lives and live according to our values. Fourth, we have distress tolerance, which is about dealing with a crisis. So when we're in crisis, how can we keep ourselves safe and not make things any worse? DBT offers really concrete ways to be more effective and how to deal with really big emotions without harming ourselves or others. The skill I'll be sharing with you today, four options for solving any problem, comes directly from DBT. And if you're interested in learning more about DBT, I'm going to link some resources below that you can check out later. <laughs> After I break down the four options for solving any problem, I'll go over in more detail how this applies specifically to reading tarot and also some of the additional factors you may want to consider. The first and best option is to just go ahead and solve the problem. If that's something that's possible, why not fix it? Why not take care of it right now? If you don't like your job, maybe consider going to look for a new one. It's really helpful when we're looking at a problem if we can see, is there a solution that I could act on right now? Because that's going to save us a lot of pain and a lot of suffering rather than if we wait and kind of just, you know, oh, I don't know, gee, I don't know. So if there is a possible solution, see if it works, see if it's accessible for you. I'll talk more about this later, but there are times where we can't solve the problem. What if you're really thirsty, but you're stranded in a desert and there's no water? What if you're thirsty, but you live in Flint, Michigan, and there's not clean water to drink, right? So sometimes there are complexities that are going to influence how we decide to go about dealing with a problem. If you come across someone that has a problem, rather than just being like, well, can you just solve the problem, right? It's good to really look through what's going on and to see if there's any systemic factors that may be inhibiting them from solving the problem. But if there is a solution available, go ahead. Solve it, take care of things. You'll thank yourself later. Option number two, change your perspective. In cognitive therapy, we often refer to this as the reframe. So this is where we have a problem, we, we can't solve it, there's not much we can do about it, but we're gonna try to shift the way we think about the problem so that we might feel differently about the problem. Let's say that you've got this softball tournament planned and you're really excited about it and you wake up that morning and it is pouring rain and it's gonna rain the whole day, right? You can be really mad or you can think, you know, uh, I haven't gotten to spend a lot of time with my dog lately. Maybe this is a great opportunity to snuggle with my dog. You haven't solved or changed anything, but you're thinking differently about it. You're finding something like a silver lining, something that you can be happy about in the midst of the problem. Oftentimes, this is where we can try to learn from a problem. You know, sometimes something comes up and we're really upset about it, and then we can stop and think a moment and be like, oh, you know, yeah, I didn't like this, I wouldn't choose to go through it, and here's what I'm gaining from it. For instance, maybe a relationship ends and we're really hurt and we're really sad, but then we stop and think and we say, you know, this is a good time to focus on myself. 
That's a great example of reframing a difficult situation. Option number three. This is one that's not easy, but is often what we need to do, and that's to tolerate the problem. I often compare it to weathering a storm. Say that you're out hiking and it starts pouring rain, thundering, lightning, right? You go and you seek shelter, you wait until conditions are better before you venture out again. A straightforward example of this would be having the flu. Let's say that you get the flu and you're not maybe, you're not an immunocompromised person, right? So this is just a straightforward case of the flu. You can't get rid of the flu, right? There's nothing you can do to solve it. You have to tolerate the problem. You have to deal with the symptoms. Maybe you, you know, watch movies to distract yourself while you wait for the symptoms of the flu to be over. Another important aspect of tolerating the problem is being able to keep yourself safe during a difficult problem. Sometimes we may be experiencing a big emotion that may prompt us to want to do some unsafe things. Tolerating the problem is about being able to notice, wow, this is a really big feeling. I don't know if I can handle this. What are some things I can do to keep myself safe right now, right? That as I'm going through this problem, I don't want to hurt myself or anyone else. When we're tolerating the problem, we're not looking to make ourselves feel all the way better, right? So if you're going through a big crisis and we're brainstorming distress tolerance skills, I don't expect that watching, you know, he's just not that into you is going to suddenly make you feel amazing, right? My hope in that instance is that watching that movie or reading that book is going to keep you distracted long enough so you don't hurt yourself or someone else, right? So that you can stay safe to give it enough time for the big emotions to go down a little bit, to turn down a few notches so that then you have a little more decision-making capacity to use. In DBT, this is often called improving the moment, right? We're trying to make the moment just better enough that we can make it through safely. With the coronavirus, right, maybe you're someone who's self-quarantining, maybe you're trying to do the social distancing, and it's really hard, right? There may not be anything you can do to solve it. Maybe it's hard to think differently about it, so maybe right now the best you can do is watch Netflix and eat ice cream, and that's okay, right? It's knowing when you need to use which skill that's important. Option number four. This one is to simply do nothing and stay miserable. I think we forget that this is an option we have. If we're facing a difficult problem, we are allowed to say, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything about that. I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna think about it. I'm just gonna be unhappy. The upside of this option is that it often feels very familiar and comfortable, right? We don't have to do anything different or unusual. We just do whatever it is that we've been doing. The downside is that if nothing changes, nothing changes. Choosing this option will often lead us to more suffering than is actually necessary. To sum up, we can solve a problem, and I would say again, if that option is available to you, go for it. Option number two is to change your perspective to reframe the way that you're thinking about the problem. Option number three is to tolerate the problem. Do what you can to improve the moment to stay safe for yourself and others. And option number four is to do nothing and stay miserable, which is a choice that you have. One criticism of cognitive theory and therapy in general is that it often doesn't take into account systemic factors like oppression or racism or classism. I, as a therapist, am very committed to looking at the ways that in which our context affects who we are on an individual level. I really believe that a lot of the tools in cognitive therapy, including DBT, are very helpful tools, and it's important for us to acknowledge the structural issues in our world today. I do believe that these four options for solving a problem can be used on every level, whether that's the individual, the family, the community, the systemic. So this is where it starts to get more complicated. When we're solving a problem, we need to be aware of both the short-term and the long-term options. So sometimes in the short term, the only thing available to us is to tolerate the problem. But maybe in the long term, there's an opportunity to solve the problem or do something more radical. As a person that was assigned female at birth, I often experience gender inequality. And in the short term, there are definitely moments where there's not a lot I can do, where all I can do is to tolerate it, to try and use my interpersonal effectiveness skills, to stay safe. But in the long term, 
I don't want to just accept that. I don't want to just say, oh, sure, that's how it's always been. I guess that's just how it's going to be, right? I'm going to fight to try to solve the problem. I'm going to try and take that on. I'm going to do whatever it is, whether that's, you know, trying to get policies enacted, providing educational workshops, right? There's so many options out there for us to look at how we can address these systemic issues. If you are someone that works in the mental health field, it's very important that you acknowledge to the people that you work with the systemic barriers that they face. It may be true that in the moment they have to learn how to tolerate the problem, but we also need to be asking how can we empower people and communities and ourselves to go ahead and try to address these problems in the long term. In general, option number three, tolerating the problem, is not meant to be a long-term solution to any problem. It's meant to be a short-term crisis-related skill. So if you find yourself regularly having to tolerate a specific problem, it may be time to ask yourself, is there something else I can do? Can I approach this in a different way? As tarot card readers, people often come to us with problems, with burdens, with things that are going on in their lives. It can be helpful to utilize this framework to think about what option might be most helpful for someone with whatever problem it is they're bringing to me. And you can frame your reading around where it is that they might need to go. Is this a, a case where it's time to solve a problem, to move into action? Do they need help building skills to tolerate a problem? Uh, do they need to shift their perspective? Right? Do you need to prompt them to make a different choice other than doing nothing? Sometimes in tarot reading, we are creating a space where we're helping people to see that there might be a different way to go about things than they have in the past. Creating hope that the future can be different than the present and the past is a really powerful thing and should not be underestimated. Maybe as a tarot reader, you can help people to define their short-term goals and strategies versus their long-term goals and strategies. Maybe you can validate them around the systemic barriers and structural oppression that they're experiencing in their lives. A core principle of DBT is being able to hold two opposing ideas at the same time. So when it comes to cognitive therapies, we can hold both that we as the individual have some choices and power and ability to make things different in our lives and we can hold that the society also plays a role in determining what happens. And those two things are not separate, they're not mutually exclusive. And so how can we empower individuals while also understanding the social context? That's a very important thing. I hope that these skills are helpful for you, whether that's in use in your own life or in use with tarot clients or any other context. These skills are something that can help all of us. Um, I highly recommend checking out DBT to see if it has skills that could be helpful for you. I hope that you have some different ideas about how you can approach problems in the future. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you've had experiences with DBT in the past that you'd like to share, whether positive or negative. I hope that you're staying safe in this difficult time. I hope that this video is helpful. If you have other ideas for videos that you'd be interested in me making, around this issue of mental health skills translating over into the tarot world, feel free to comment below. As you set out to solve problems, please remember to be kind to yourself. Just because you're not able to overcome a problem right away, that doesn't mean that you're a failure. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Take a moment, take a deep breath, be kind to yourself. Remember that you're doing your best and see if there's a support that's available to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. I hope this was helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, we'll see you next time.